Shalom, shalom. I'm Officer Judea, also known as Prince Yizzy. Shalom, I'm Officer Solomon, also known as Solomon the Benjamite. And we are One, One Nation, Nation Israelite, Israelite School. School. And welcome to the Sabbath class. Today's class is entitled Just Men Stumble. Just Men Stumble. We're going to get into this topic. Um, bear with me, I'm feeling a little under the weather for some reason. Today's class, we're going to get into it, uh, just men stumble, all right? And it's true, we all have little slip-ups, we make behind mistakes, we have things where we err. Um, but we got the scriptures to guide us right. Um, so we're going to touch it, but I beg of you all, please don't let today's class embolden you to just go out and do sin. All right. Because you still have to, the scriptures say what it says. There's still no sin that goes unpunished. All right. And there's still a willful sin that's unforgiven. All right. So I'll let today's class in Bolger is just basically uh, encouraging you to keep going if you just so happen to err on this walk. All right. So no further ado, let's uh, stand up and send up prayers to the Most High. up this morning. Thank you for all your blessings. Forgive us for all our sins, knowing none known. Father God, give us the strength to overcome the demons that we fight on a day-to-day -day basis. Father God, we know that in this walk, we will stumble and we will have our errors, but we ask that you hear our supplications and that we try in our due diligence that you forgive, our, you forgive us of our shortcomings. But for those who take your word for granted, Father God, do as you please. As you said, in, in our affliction, we shall seek thee early. Father God, bless the Israelites amongst the four corners of the earth. Uh, heal those that are sick. Uh, bring those back to health that are that are down and their health have been plagued that they may come back and to put into put into work put their brick into the nation and help us get up out of here. We thank you for our strong drink, for our food. We thank you for the clothes to cover our backs, the houses to cover shame. Father God, we ask that you send everybody the, the, the things they need that they may be to walk successfully and to better serve you in this captivity. Send a husband to the husbandless, send a wife to the wifeless. Father God, send shelter to the shelterless. Send food to the hungry. Father God, we just pray for we just pray for these things in abundance, the things that we may need. Not that we may be rich, but we, that we may not be in poverty. Father God, sustain us as we know that if we keep your commandments, all things that you see fit. We no longer have to worry. Like you said, the scriptures say you've never seen the righteous begging bread. Father God. We ask that you give us the strength to gird ourselves up in this captivity to come over the demons that fight against us, to stand against the wicked nations that pull strongholds against the nation of Israel. Father God, give us the tools that we may cast down every wicked thing that exalts itself against your words, Father God. We give you the glory, the praise, and the honor. We thank you for the prophets. We thank you for the prophetess. Father God, speak through the prophets. Let the message go out strong and that the body may be edified. Father God, we ask that you rise the nation up and reign indignation upon the enemies. And your son Christ, man, we give you the glory and the praise and the honor. Amen. Amen. And finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his word. His might. His word. His might. His word. His might. His word. His might. So, um, 
today's class is entitled Today's class again is entitled Just Men Stumble. When we say just men, that's not me. We all know this includes women too. Just men and women, we all stumble in this truth. We all have our shortcomings. Alright? So um whoever's online or uh, not online, please log in. Alright? Um Make sure y'all invite me, y'all follow up, share the broadcast. All right, so um, today's class is entitled, A Just Man Stumble. Like I told you before, we stand up the prayers. Don't let this class, uh, shalom, shalom, shawine. Shalom. <laughs> uh, don't let this class embolden you to go out and commit sin because you still have to pay for your sins. All right? But this class is just for those who may stumble on this walk. Don't get down and give up because there's still hope. You know? Right. All right? So, um, shalom. <laughs> shalom. All right. Um, let's open up with 2 Timothy 3. Uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16. 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16. All scriptures is given by inspiration of God. So every scripture is given by the inspiration of God. This we go here because everything was given by the inspiration of God. That kills the stupid saying that man wrote the Bible. All right. All right. Everything in this Bible was given by the inspiration of God. Come on. And it's profitable for doctrine. It's profitable for our doctrine. For reproof. For reproof. For correction. It's meaning the same thing. Reproof or correction. Come on. For instruction in righteousness. For instructions in righteousness. Instru instructions in righteousness. This basically is telling you that every scripture was given for us. For if we should stumble or if we should fall. All right. Verse 17. Verse 17. That the man of God may be perfect. That the man of God may be perfect. What is perfect? Give me Psalms 19 and 7 real quick. Psalms chapter 19 and verse 7. So all scriptures was given basically to direct us, to correct us, to instruct us, to to uh, to catch us and help us guide ourselves back to the way that we should be if we just so happen to stumble or if we should happen to fall. Verse 17 said that ye may be able. So all these things that is said in verse 16, uh, instruction, correction, reproof, uh, all those things, right? Those things are going to make you perfect. What that I mean, those things work to, to the building of us being perfect. That ye may be perfect. Well, what is perfect? Psalms 19 and 7. Psalms chapter 19 and verse 7. The law of the Lord is perfect. Converting the, what? the law of the Lord is perfect. The law of the Most High God is perfect. Come on. Converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. So go back to uh, go back to 2 Timothy uh, 3 and 17. So now that we understand that the law is perfect and it converts our souls. Come on. 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 17. So everything in verse 16 is working to the building of making us what? Verse 17. That the man of God may be perfect. Thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Um, now, why, why, when we take all that into account, the laws are perfect. Uh, 2 Timothy 3 and 16, all those things work to the building that we may be perfect and, furn and perfectly furnished. Why would we need that? Because of this right here. Give me Psalms 51 verse 5. Psalms chapter 51 and verse 5. Psalms chapter 51 and verse 5. Behold, I was sharpened in iniquity. Shaping. I'm, I'm sorry. Behold, I was shaping in iniquity. Basically means born into sin. We all have, we, as we walk in the flesh, our flesh is what? Naturally sinful. All right. So it was born into sin. Come on. And in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward part. Hold on, where is that? That was the end of verse 5. Then I started reading 6. No, I just need 5. All right. Behold, I was shaping in iniquity, and in sin my mother did conceive me. Right, so we were born into sin. We were conceived in sin. Why? Because the flesh is sinful. 
So that's why we need the laws of God and uh, 2 Timothy 3 and 16, all those things that build the world to make it us perfect. So this is telling you straight up, you can be perfect. You may not be perfect in what the world tells you is perfect, right. but perfect is God's laws. Right. And what I'm going to show you is even if you mess up, you still can be considered perfect. Right. Why? Because the scripture tells us clear as day. I'm going to get there in a second. Don't let me move too fast. Um, so we was born into sin. So every scripture is for our prophet to cleanse and to furnish and to convert us unto perfection. All right. So now watch this. Let's go to uh, Ecclesiastes 7 and 20. Ecclesiastes in the Bible. Ecclesiastes chapter 7 and verse 20. Ecclesiastes chapter 7 and verse 20. For there is not a just man upon earth. All right, so it says there is not a just man upon earth. Now, a just man would be the same thing as a righteous man. All right. Let's, I'm going to touch a, uh, two scriptures real quick just to show that that's not what it's, it's not, that's not what it's really, really talking about. It's not saying it's not a righteous man on earth. It's not a just man on earth. I'm gonna, let's uh, watch this. Let's go to uh, Matthews 1 and 19 real quick. Matthews 1 and 19. I'm going to touch that real quick. Matthew chapter 1 and verse 19. So it says it's not a just man upon the earth, right? That's what it just said, right? Right. All right, so read uh, Matthew's 1 and 19 really quick. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man. Hold on. Joseph was a what? A just man. So if somebody who read the Bible didn't understand it, they would say the Bible just contradicted itself. Right. No. Read it again. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to... Minded to put her away privately. Right, so he was a just man, meaning he was a righteous man. He was a man that kept the laws. Him being a just man, right. he didn't want to put her away as if he didn't know how she appeared pregnant. He know he jumped the gun and laid with Mary. Um, and for y'all, that's a later class. We'll do that. We'll get into that later because I know a lot of people think about the Immaculate Conception or Christ just appeared in Mary's womb. No, that ain't what happened. Never happened. We'll touch that another day. All right. So now, let's get another one. Let's go to Hebrews 12 and 23. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 23. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 23. To the general assembling and church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven, and to God the judge of all, and to the spirit of just men made perfect. Right. To just men made perfect. So it's telling you that what? There is a such thing as just men. So now when we go back to Ecclesiastes 7 and 20. Let's go back. So <clears throat> this is the point. This is what it was saying. All right. It's been explained itself. I just wanted to touch the just men to show you that there is a such thing as just men. All right. So there'll be no contradictions later. All right. So let's read seven, Ecclesiastes 7 and 20 from the top again. And we're going to see what that was talking about. Ecclesiastes Chapter 7 and verse 20. For there is not a just man upon earth that doth good and sinneth not. That do what? Doth not good and sinneth not. So that, that was the point. That sinneth not. Let you know that a just man is a perfect man and a righteous man. But guess what? We all still sin. Right. We all have our things that we fall short in on this walk. We all got our particular demons that we fight. And so, so the point is that sinneth not. We all going to have our slip-ups, falls, and stones. We was all given a thorn in the flesh that would keep... That thorn in our flesh is that particular demon or that sin that we battle. That, that sometimes gets the best of us. Why was we all given that? Because then it, it, no, no man could get arrogant or ahead of themselves. All right? That's why you got some people that are holy and then thou, because they don't forgot they got their own demon that they battle. All right. All right. So watch this. Let's let's get Paul. Paul had Paul. He explains it a little decent. Let's get uh Second Corinthians. I believe it's twelve and seven. Second Corinthians chapter twelve and verse seven. Is that it? Second Corinthians. At least I should be a judge of measure. Yeah. All right. Second yeah. Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 7. And least I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations. 
There was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me. Mm. Least I should be exalted above measure. All right, at least he get above himself. He get ahead of himself. You know what I'm saying? He said, no, it was a thorn that was given to me as well. That means your particular demon or sin that you bow. And sometimes uh, Paul fell weak to it. Sometimes that demon that he battled got the best of him. Every last one of us have something that we, we something we gonna mess around and slip. All right. When well, you in this truth, but what 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 makes the difference between when you slip and when I slip, or you slip, or what do you do when you slip? Do you pick yourself up, dust yourself off, repent, and turn from it, or do you say, you know what? Well, I already done messed up. Might well keep going full fledged. Right. Do you keep returning and doing the same thing over and over? Because that's not slipping. That's just love and sin. All right. All right. So it says, um, he said, read, read that verse again one more time, please. At least I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelation. There was given to me a thorn in my in the flesh. Mm -hmm. The messenger of Satan the to buffet. The messenger of Satan to do what? Buffet me. Buffet means torment, tempt, torture, or uh that that's pretty much it. Torture, tem uh torture, tempt, or uh he, he was uh, tormented by this stuff. It, it rolled him basically. This thing, that was his demon. It came back like Satan. That's why he said like Satan message. If you are uh, the message of Satan, if you read in Luke, when uh, the, the devil got done tempting Christ, he said he left for a season. Right. That's what it's talking about. That particular thing that sits on you that you you think you've been and then it come back. One moment you're walking right, the next thing you know, you find yourself doing it again. Or that temptation that it leaves and it comes back. It leaves and it comes back. That was that particular thorn that from that message of Satan that was buffeting, buffeting Paul. That's the same thing when it says buffet. You got a particular demon that for some reason it don't stay going. It keep coming back. All of us have that. And at some time, you fall and you slip to that same damn thing. But dang, all right. I was doing good in this thing. Make you mad too. We all have that demon that we have to fight. All right? But watch this. Let's go to... Uh, Let's go to Proverbs 24 and 16. This is the, uh, this is basically the main scripture of this whole class right here. Proverbs 24 and 16. Proverbs chapter 24 and verse 16. Proverbs chapter 24 and verse 16. For a just man falls seven times and rises up again. Hold on, hold on. It's way too fast, I'm sorry. Read, read, <laughs> read, read to uh, that seven times thing. Oh, okay. I mean, it rises up again, I'm sorry. For a just man falls seven times and rises up again. So it says a just man falls seven times. And this is not talking about the literal number seven. It's saying a just man falls seven times and rises up again. We all going to stumble and slip and make mistakes, no doubt about it. No doubt about it. If that gives When somebody slips up or stumble or fall, it gives none of us in here the right to laugh, right. uh, make this, you, you know, you think, you, better than thank you, you think you're better than them. Why? Because we all going to stumble. We all got our particular demon that we fighting. We just read it in Paul. We was all given a thorn. It gives none of us the right to laugh at somebody or treat them as if they less than a human because right. they stumble. Imagine if we only literally had the number seven times to mess up. Right. I've been dead long ago. I'm telling you, man. As a fact, watch this. Give me Romans uh, 3 and 23 real quick. Romans chapter 3 and verse 23. Romans chapter 3 and verse 23. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Hold on. Which one of y'all haven't sinned? You hear that? Crickets. Yeah. Because <laughs> everybody in here, <laughs> everybody in here done stumbled a sin at some point. Oh, yeah. Right? So it says, uh, read that one more time. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And we have all sinned and come short of the glory of God. So what it's telling you, once again, a righteous man stumbled, uh, falleth seven, a just man falleth seven times and rises up again. Now, it's letting you know you're going to make mistakes. You're going to stumble. You're going to fall in the midst of this walk. you going to mess up. You're going to make mistakes. I remember I was talking to uh, a brother one day out there. And he was like, man, I've been in this thing. And it keep 
we, it was a certain thing he was battling, and, and, he, and he, was, he was upset. And I was like, bro, stay in the spirit. Stay in the fight. We all going to have that particular thorn that we have to overcome. And we all going to stumble. We all going to fall in this wall. But guess what? How do you pick yourself up? Do you acknowledge it? Do you? What do you do? You keep fighting. All right? So, once again, this class, don't let it embold you to sin. Because the Bible still tells us that one sin shall go unpunished. So don't use this scripture as your cop out to keep sinning. <laughs> All right? Uh, no sin shall go unpunished. There's still no sacrifice for willful sin. I'm just saying we all have our shortcomings and our demons that we battle. All right? But when you fall, what I'm telling you is when you fall, don't just give up and wallow in the sin. These are the things that we should do. First thing we should do, give me uh, 2 Corinthians 13 and 5. 2 Corinthians 13 and 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 5. Examine yourselves. So that's the first thing you got to do. When you find that demon that you keep falling to, what you need to do, first thing you need to do is examine yourself. Now I'm going to give you the steps. I'm giving y'all the steps. I'm breaking it down in the steps. What's the format we do to start beating these demons we battle? First and foremost. Examine yourself. Whether you be in the faith, prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves, how your how shy is in you, except ye be reprobate? Except you be reprobate. Mm -hmm. Reprobate is beyond salvation. He just don't see it. That's one of the worst things you can do, be in the midst of sin and not acknowledge it. Not right. see it. Everybody telling you, hey, brother, you're going off, and you just don't get it. I know we know multiple people walking around in the midst of sin and don't even realize they're in the midst of sin. Or just completely turn the blind eye to the fact that they walk in the sea. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, first thing you got to do is examine yourself. Acknowledge, okay, examine yourself. Psalms 51 and 3. This is his first step, examine yourself. Second step, second step, uh, Psalms 51 and 3. Psalms chapter 51 and verse 3. Psalms chapter 51 and verse 3. For I acknowledge my transgressions. Hold on, he said he did what? For I acknowledge my transgression. First step is to examine. Second step is to acknowledge. Finish that. Uh, read it from the top again. For I acknowledge my transgressions. And my sin is ever before me. Alright. So now watch this. Go to, uh, go to uh, Acts 3 and 19. So first off. You examining yourself. Second off you are acknowledging your sin. Or what it is that. Whatever particular demon it is or thorn that's kicking your ass, you got to <laughs> acknowledge that thing. <laughs> okay, so once you acknowledge it, then you can successfully do what? Verse uh, 3, Acts chapter 3, verse 19. Acts chapter 3 and verse 19. Repent ye therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. So that means you have to repent. Once you examine your situation... You acknowledge the particular thing that's getting the best of you. You repent. And then you have to do, and repentance, you can't just sit here and say a prayer and say, forgive me, God. And then wake up tomorrow and do it again. Hmm. That's not repentance. It's not. This is what you must do. Second, Chron Second Chronicles 7 and 14. So I'm giving you the steps. I'll be writing down step one, step two, step three, step, all right? That's how you're supposed to be doing you must be dying, stop! <laughs> Say that. Alright. Second Chronicles, what? Uh, 7 and 14. Second Chronicles <laughs> chapter 7 and verse 14. Alright, so step one again, it was examine yourself. Step two was acknowledge. Step three was repent. Because once you've acknowledged it, now you can repent for it. Now, here's the full step to a repentance. What must you do after you repent? Uh, Second Chronicles chapter 7 and verse 14. Second Chronicles chapter 7 and verse 14. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves. You have to humble yourself. Me. Humbling yourself can also be considered fasting. Right. Right? Come on. And pray. And pray, come on. And seek my face. Come on. And turn from their wicked ways. That's the one. That's the part that I wanted. Turn from the wicked ways. Turn from the wicked ways. Turn from the wicked ways. So now you're turning from your wicked ways. You're going to have to examine yourself again. You got to examine yourself again. Uh, 
Second, Second Corinthians 13 and 5. We ain't going there again. I'm just saying. You're going to have to examine yourself again. So once you acknowledge your, examine yourself, acknowledge what it is you're battling, repent, and turn from those wicked ways, then you must examine yourself again. Why? To remember what caused you to fall the first time. You have, you have to remember the vices that are, are causing you to err. First, you just examine yourself to see what the hell wrong with you, what's going on. Then you acknowledge, okay, dang, I'm in the midst of this. Then you repent it for what you did. Then you turn away from it. You examine yourself again to see, well, dang, what caused me to stumble? As a fact, give me that uh, when Christ was writing to the church. Um, second, uh, no, that's it. Second, that was Revelation. Revelation chapter 2. Start at uh, verse 1. Revelation chapter 2 and verse 1. Unto the angel of the church of Ephesus write, These things saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden golden candlesticks. So this was Christ's words. That's why he said, uh, this, he is describing who it was. It's like, this is Christ. Uh, this, this is what you need to hear. Come on. Christ told me to write this to y'all. Come on. The church of Ephesus, for those who don't know, it's the church of Ephesians. I know thy works. He said, I know your works. Come on. And thy labor and thy patience. And how thou canst not bear them which are evil. And thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not, and hast found them liars. So these brothers was tearing people down. They was tearing it down. They was they was putting in work. Alright, but watch this. And has borne and has patience. And for my name's sake has labored and has not fainted. So these brothers was put in, in work. It's telling you that these brothers was just men. This church in Ephesus, they were just men. But watch this. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee. Like, Uh-oh. I have something against thee. Come on. Because thou hast left thy first love. You have did what? Left thy first love. Come on. Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen, and repent, and do the first work. So he said, you need to remember from what thou hast fallen, repent, and do the first works. Come on. Or else I will come unto thee quickly and will remove thy candlestick out of his place except thou repent. You know what that means when you say I'm going to move your candlestick out of his place? I'm about to kill you, right? Bingo. He said I'm going to kill you. If you don't get it together, remember what caused it. Watch this verse. Uh, so it's, oh, I'm sorry. He said I'll remove that uh, candlestick out of place except thou repent. He's telling me if you don't repent, I'm going to kill you. He said you have to remember from what caused thee to fall? I mean, you need to remember what what was it? What did you start indulging in that caused you to error? What it is? Once you find out those things, then you can successfully cut them off. So once again, I'm giving. I'm gonna keep repeating because I want y'all to make sure y'all got it. Step one: examine yourself. Step two: acknowledge what it is you're in the midst of. Three: repent. Four: turn away from it. Five. Examine yourself again to remember what caused you to fall. Then 6, Matthew 5 and 29. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 29. Because once you can successfully identify what caused you to fall, what it is you fall into, what it is, and you turn away from it, then you can successfully start cutting off the things that make it easier for you to fall into it. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 29. And if thy right eye offend thee, pluck it out. Now, now please, I'm going to say it again. The officer said it before. Don't literally go in the bathroom and take your eye out, please. <laughs> <laughs> now, there's a brother that, he took the words literal and he went and poked his eye out. That dude Houston. Yeah, another dude cut his damn hand off like an idiot. All right, Houston. All right, so <laughs> if your eye calls you to read it again. And if thy right eye offend thee, pluck it out. Right. And cast it from thee. Right, so it's saying if your right eye caught a Fendi, take it out and, and cast it away from thee. Uh, for some people, eyes are dangerous. I'm going to keep it honest. I'm, your eyes is the worst thing to you. Why? Because what does everything start at? What does cuss, uh, uh, coveting and lust and all that stuff start from? Your eyes. your eyes. You see something, you like it, and you want it. And you covet that thing. So it says, if you got a problem with, and I can't really help you with looking at women because they everywhere. Yeah. I'm not gonna tell you here. Stay out stay out the uh, grocery store, but then you might starve to death. <laughs> so you gotta you gotta discipline your eyes. 
I'm going to tell you how you can do it, though. Uh, start by trying not letting your head do this thing here. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Try to stop your head from doing this. You walk past that pretty woman, you know she look good. Stop your head from itching, I know it's to, see, hard, brothers. itching to see what's behind it. I know somebody be really fighting, and then they go to find them, too. They be like, <laughs> remember we was out there doing the street teaching one time. We talked to the brother, and this girl walked by, and she was stacked right. But I'm in a word, so I, she just walked by. This brother was like, I said, don't look at the booty. He said, <laughs> <laughs> he was trying to fight it. <laughs> he was trying. Hey, I told him, don't look at the booty. That head went just like this. <laughs> oh, I knew it. The head was what we was teaching. <laughs> he was over there trying to talk to this sister. <laughs> so, so if the right eye he plug it out and cast it from me. Give me verse 30. Verse 30. And if thy right hand offend thee, cut it off. If your right hand offend thee, cut it off. That's That right hand is a lot. And the reason why the Bible always make mention to the right hand because your right hand is what you swear oaths with. Right. Your right hand is what you pledge with. Your right hand is, is basically saying what you take action in. If you know you got a problem with... Basically what this scripture is telling you, your demons, if this is your... you got If you're a drinker, you can't help how much you drink. Stay away from the bar. All right. If you got a problem with eating, stay out the kitchen. All right. If you have a problem with uh, touching touching things in the grocery store, stay out the store. <laughs> <laughs> it's just if you have your eyes. If you know you have a, a less spirit, stay off of BET. It'll make you do it. Yeah, you don't need to be watching Love and Hip Hop and. Oh, Basketball yeah. wives and all that other stuff. You know what I'm saying? Uh, y'all, I ain't gonna go into all that other stuff because y'all, <laughs> you know, if you got a problem with watching them dang nasty videos, you may not need a phone with internet. You might have to go back to them old uh, Flip phones. Them suitcase phones. No. The phones big as, big as a suitcase. <laughs> <laughs> or you can get your flip phone where it just lets you text and call. Right. It's Read on. What was that, 30? Read on. 30. And cast it from thee, for it, is, for it is profitable for thee that one of thy members shall perish. So it's better for you to lose that phone with internet on it than to have your whole body cast into the lake of fire. It's better, it's better for you to cut off the things that cause you to error than it is for you to get yourself put to death and, and thrown into the lake of fire. And get fried and died and threw peppers on the side. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so cause some of y'all going to be, uh, some, some of y'all is going to be literally... Pepper state. What you gonna look like a good beef stew? You gonna look like beef stew. <laughs> Some of y'all gonna get cooked up. You tell me something, I'm in a big congregation, so I'm fine. Hell, they sell charcoal about a ton. <laughs> they don't <laughs> stop. <laughs> right? You know what I'm saying? I, I've never seen them drop one French fry in the grease at McDonald's. I think they drop a basket of them at a time. And I'm gonna tell you something that charcoal run out, they got wood. <laughs> <laughs> right? And I heard somebody, somebody said, they say, well, what well, they ain't got no chocolate. They said, one dude say, well, <laughs> steak tastes better with oak wood anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, wood ain't going to let no wood. All right, so, <laughs> so, what I, it's better for you to uh, cut off whatever it is that caused you to sin than to have your whole body cast into the lake of fire. All right, we all have a demon that we battle. Your job is to strategize, well, how can I beat this demon? Nine times ten is probably going to be open this. Right. When you start opening this, you start finding things. <laughs> um, keep yourself in contact with brothers that fear the Lord. You know what I'm saying? And the midst of fellowship, wickedness rarely ever come across my mind. Right. Every now and then, you know, we may have to say, hey, hey, brew your spirit. spirit. Right. You know what I'm saying? Tell you. Change, that's basically another way of saying change the subject. All right. All right. So now, Luke 13 and 3. Luke chapter 13 and verse 3. So we was all born in the sin. I'm, I'm, uh, you know me. When I was out the scripture, I may refer back to it any time in the class. We was all born in the sin. But in this walk, as you, you, as you're trying to get better, you're trying to become the perfect man, you're going to stumble. You're trying to become the perfect woman, you're going to stumble, you're going to slip up. Some of the things you pick up in this world, it's a little harder to dust off than it is with other particular things. Like somebody, any shrimp, that probably wasn't no thing to them. Right. Uh, drinking, that probably wasn't no thing to them. But that goddamn weed, that 
say and hunt them when they sleep. You know what I'm saying? He may, he may not be smoking no more. I hope, I pray everybody does stop, not stop smoking weed. But that thought still make, oh my God. You walking down the street, that smell from somebody's car passed by you. Yeah. <laughs> All right? All right? And you could call that. That was blue. That was, that was, that was, that was mango he just rolled by with. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So you got that particular demon. But uh, some of you sisters, y'all may have had that damn brother who used to put it down. Mr. Yeah. He used to he used, <laughs> to, he used to he used to put it down, Mr. Break your back or whatever. Mr. Fantastic. Um <laughs> you walking by, hey. Oh, you may scroll past you on your Facebook and happen to see his page. And then them old memories pop up in you. He got his shirt off on his page. You know he a nigga from the world. He got his shirt off on the page and instantly come back in your mind. He used to tap that ass. Whatever. <laughs> 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 Some of y'all had issues with somebody in the world. I'm like, ooh, I'm like, and as soon as you saw his face again, you just want to beat him down again. <laughs> Whatever it is, you know what I'm saying? We all have that particular demon we got to fight. We got to get it off. The scriptures say, uh, what I was going here to Luke 13 and 3 for, because it's a lot of things we picked up in this world, in this walk, that now we got to shake it off. You got to find some way to defeat that demon that you picked up. Why? Luke 13 and 3. Luke chapter 13 and verse 3. I tell you, nay, but except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. It's telling you repent or die. It's telling you straight up, repent or die. And except you repent, ye shall all die. I was reading five and it just said the same thing. Okay, yeah. Well, it's, crazy. it's telling you the same thing. As long as you, if you, if you shall repent or ye shall die. Ye shall repent or ye shall die. One or the other. One way, one way, one way or the other. That's why I was telling you, don't let this class embolden you to sin. Right. Because at the end of the day, regardless, if you're you going to repent or you're going to die. All right? So you don't find a way to beat that demon, you're going to die. You're going to perish within. All right? Um, so now, I'm going to show you we had issues. Let's get our forefather. He erred and he repented. Um, just to show that just man stumbled. Was David considered a just man at the end of his days? Of course. Absolutely. But David error. Now let's get it. Let's go to uh, 2 Samuel. We're going to start at chapter 11. 2 Samuel chapter 11. That's what you said? Yeah, chapter 11. Start at verse 1. Okay. And we're going to read down to 8. 2 Samuel chapter 11 and verse 1. And it came to pass, after the year was expired, at the time when king, kings go forth to battle, that David sent Joab and his servants with him and all Israel. And they destroyed the children of Ammon and besieged Rahab. But David tarried still at Jerusalem. And it came to pass in the evening, in the evening tide, that David arose from off his bed and walked. Shalom, shalom. Uh, great class today, brother. Great class. Yeah, shalom. Good class. Good class. Oh, yeah. Shalom. Thank you. All right, come on. Upon the roof of the king's house, and from, and from the roof he saw a woman washing herself. And the woman was very beautiful to look upon. So David was taking a bath. I mean, he was walking on the roof, and he saw a woman bathing herself. Now, right there, I'm going to tell you straight up. Lust came all in his mind. You know it. Because... Obviously, she was beautiful. It just told you that. She looked good. David was looking at her. What did David do? Watch it. <laughs> and David sent and inquired after the woman. Hey, go get her. <laughs> Please go get her. And one said, it is said it is not this Bathsheba, the daughter of Elohim. Hey, you know, you got to put it in today, sir. Are you talking about Bathsheba? That's Elohim's daughter. Right. Who else? The wife of Uriah the Hittite. And that's that, that's that uh, one dude. Uh, she married to the brother... Uh, uh, Uriah, the Hittite. Yeah, that's his, that's his old lady. And David sent messengers and took her. He took her anyways. And he said, well, bring her anyways. <laughs> right? And she, and she came in unto him. And he lay with her, for she was purified from her cleanly. And he went in and jumped all over her. This guy had. So he done, he, he done found out who she is. He, first of all, he looked at her and lusted after her. Then, then said, uh, go get her. Well, they went and got her. He gonna have sex with the damn woman, <laughs> right? <laughs> what verse was that? That was verse four. 
Uh, I, uh, read on. And she returned unto her house. And the woman conceived and sent, sent and told David and said, I am with child. So now he done got the woman pregnant, right? What verse is that? That's five. All right. Um, I don't want to read the whole history. Jump to verse 11. Verse 11. And Uriah said unto Hold David. No, 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 no. You're right. You're right. Go, go read, read, read on because I got to stop at him. And David said to Joab, saying, Send me Uriah the Hittite. And Joab sent Uriah to David. So after he done found out he done got the woman pregnant, now he say, send, send her husband to me. Ain't that something? And when Uriah was coming to him, David demanded of him how Joab did and how the people did and how the war was proposed. So he's like, hey man, how the war going? What's up with the war? What is it looking like? Come on. And David said to Uriah, go down to thy house and wash thy feet. And Uriah departed out of the king's house. And there followed him a mess of meat from the king. So David being wicked as hell right now. He done laid with the man wife, got a prayer. Now he going to send the man home. Basically, so he could lay with his wife, and he—you gotta put yourself in the mind. You come home and you lay with your wife, and nine months later, a baby come. You gonna think it's what your baby, right? So David being wicked as hell. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Then he gonna send a man a bunch of meat. And trying to bribe yeah, the man. He's yeah. basically telling you, hey, keep it in, stay in the house all night. <laughs> got a mess of meat coming for you too. Here you go, eat off. Y'all, y'all ain't got to leave the room. Here you go, y'all got meat. You know, brother, he think he's showing love. Hey man, he looking out. Right now, so um, what we're gonna do is let's jump to verse to, jump to verse eleven. Verse eleven, and Uriah said unto David, the ark in Israel and Judah abide in tents, and my lord Joab and the servants of my lord are in camp in the open fields. Shall I then go into my house to eat and to drink and to lie with my wife? He said, "So hold on, we in the middle of war. I'm gonna right. just go home and eat and lay with my wife. <laughs> Come on." And to okay, as thou livest and as thy soul liveth, I will not do this thing. And David said to Uriah, Terry, Terry here today also, and tomorrow I will let thee depart. So Uriah abided in Jerusalem that day and the morrow. And when David had called him, he did eat and drink before him, and he made him drunk. Oh man. And that <laughs> you got the man drunk. Come on. That, son? And that evening he went out to lay on his bed with the servant of his Lord, but went not down to his house. And it came to pass in the morning that David wrote a letter, a letter to Joab and sent it by the hand of Uriah. And he wrote in the letter saying, Set ye, ye Uriah in the forefront of the hot, hottest battle. See, he said in the, in the biggest and the worst battle, sit Uriah in the front line. Put him on the front line. What, what, was, what was the intentions of that? So he could yeah. die first. Bingo. Right. Watch this. And retire ye from him that he may be smitten and die. So that was his plan for this man to go ahead and get killed. Well, I can't fool him with his wife because he won't go home. <laughs> you know what? When the battle get thick and hot, put him on the front line. Jump over to verse, that he may be killed. Jump over to verse uh, 24. Verse 24. And the shooters shot from off the wall upon the servants, and some of the king's servants be dead. And thy servant Uriah the Hittite is dead also. So he did get him killed. Watch this, read on. Then David said unto the messenger, Thus shalt thou say unto Joab, Let not this thing displease thee, for the sword divideth one as well as another. Make so now he, he, this, David was being wicked as hell. He was going in with his like, wicked he, like, he like, hey man, everybody gonna die by the sword one day. Right. That's basically what he was saying. Hey man, don't feel bad. You know, he died, but you know, that's war. We all gonna die by the sword. Come on. All right. Make thy battle more strong against the city, and overthrow it, and encourage thou him. And when the wife of Uriah, Uriah heard that Uriah, her husband, was dead, she mourned for her husband. Come on. And when the morning was past, David sent and fetched her to his house, and she became his wife and bare him a son. But the king that, but the thing that David did had displeased the Lord. So the thing that David did displeased the Lord, because he got... He, he went wicked, and he, was, he started thinking about himself, and he abused his power, right? But for a moment, David forgot that it was still a man upstairs watching. Right. And that's like us. We embold ourselves in sin sometimes, and we think because we don't see you, or we, we stumble and we slip it, and some of us continue to, we fall into sin, and instead of repenting and ch changing, we continue to walk and press forward in that thing because nobody else sees it. Well, no man see it. Forgetting that it's still somebody else that you, you ain't pleasing me. You're supposed to be pleasing the most high. All right. His 
eyes 10,000 times brighter than the sun. He see it all. Right. Right? Watch this. Uh, so now, let's get it. Because David, David eventually repented. Let's get it. Uh, uh, now, you got to think about it. Have any one of y'all had somebody in here killed? Uh, and if you do, just, um, you know, humble yourselves. <laughs> Repent. <laughs> but, you know what I'm saying? But if you slept with somebody else's wife, God will pray that and then try to pretend like it was his baby. No. Okay, so what y'all got to do is, what I'm showing you is David went into a whole heap of sin. You can repent too, because he repented. All right, watch this. Let's, uh, get, let's read from chapter 12, verse 1. Chapter 12, verse 1. But the Lord sent Nathan unto David, and he came unto him and said unto him, There went two men in one city, the one rich and the other poor. So he, Nathan came to him and spoke to him in a parable. He said, hey, man, it was in the, there went there, and came unto him two men and, and said unto him, there. Okay, so that's Stephen. <laughs> oh, you can't fight. All right, watch this. Read, read, read 12 again. I'm sorry. Read 12 and 1. And the Lord sent Nathan unto David, and he came unto him and said unto him, There were two men in one city, the one rich and the other poor. So he said, There's a one rich man and, a, and the other one was poor. Watch this. Read on. The rich man had exceeding many flocks and herds. But the poor man had nothing, save one little ill lamb, which he had bought and nourished up. And it grew up together with him and with his children. It did eat of his own meat and drank of his own cup and lay in his bosom and was unto him as a daughter. Come on, just, I need mean, to read, read up, read up. All right. And there was a traveler unto, unto the rich man, and he, and he spared to take of his own flock and of his own herd and to dress for the wafering man that was coming to him but took the poor man's lamb and dressed it for the man that was come to him. So he, took, he giving him a parable. David ain't catching it right now. Watch what David do. And David's anger was greatly kindled against the man. And he said to Nathan, as the Lord liveth, the man that have done this thing shall surely die. Mm. Uh -huh. yeah. Now watch this. Right here. Watch this. So hold on. As a fact, as a fact let's jump over now. What, uh, as a fact, Jump down to, no, no, we got to read through, read, 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 watch this, watch this. So David done got mad. He said, that man, what did this shall surely die? Watch this, read on. And he shall restore the lamb fourfold because he did this thing and because he had no pity. And Nathan said to David, thou art the man. That said, <laughs> read it again. Oh, my God. And Nathan said to David, thou art the man. Nathan, the man. Nathan said to David, while David was getting hot, he wasn't even realizing that he was the man that this parable was speaking of. He said, no, you are the man. Jeez. Watch this. You don't know what you, you don't get it? He took out that man wife you took. Right. And then had him killed. Read it again. And Nathan said to David, thou art the man. Hold on. Read five and six again. I'm sorry. And David anger was greatly kindled against the man. And he said to the Nathan, as the Lord liveth, the man that have done this thing shall surely die. And he said, restore the lambs for fourfold because he did this thing and because he had no pity. And Nathan said to David, thou art the man. Thus said the Lord God of Israel, I anointed thee king over Israel and I delivered thee out of the hand of Saul. All right, read on. So he, once he found out that he was the man, um, watch this, read verse 8. And I gave thee thy master's house and thy master's wives into thy bosom, and gave thee the house of Israel and of Judah. And if that, and if that had been too little, I would moreover have given unto thee such and such things. Wherefore hast thou despised the commandment of the Lord to do evil in his sight? Thou hast killed Uriah the Hittite with the sword, and hast taken his wife to be thy wife, and hast slain him with the sword of the children of Ammon. Mm. Now therefore the sword shall never depart from thine house, because thou hast despised me, and hast taken the wife of Uriah the Hittite to be thy wife. Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will rise up evil against thee out of thy own house, and I will take thy wife before thy eyes, and give them unto thy neighbor. And he shall lay with thy wives in the sight of this son. 
Right. Um, a lot of people who don't know, um, one of David's sons ended up sleeping with one of his wives. Yep. Absalom. No. No. It's real. Yes, he did. No. But, okay, so um, where we at? Uh, we was at the, we was at 10. Watch this, read on. Then said the Lord, Behold, I will rise up evil against thee out of thy own house, and I will take thee, take thy wife before thy eyes and give them unto the neighbors, and he shall lie with thy wives in the sight of this son. Come on. For thou did it secretly. So what you did, you did it secretly. You were sneaking around and you did what you did. But guess what? Read on. But I will do this, but I will do this thing before all Israel and before the son. So now here goes David's repentance. Read it. And David said unto Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. And Nathan said unto David, The Lord also have put away thy sin, that thou not, thou shalt not die. How be it? Because this deed thou hast, hast given great occasion to the enemies of the Lord, to blaspheme. The child also that is born unto thee shall surely die. So uh, he was forgiven. But... If y'all remember when we did the uh, dealing with death class, mm -hmm. that his son that he created out of adultery with this woman, Bathsheba, was stricken with sickness and the child died. Right? So what I was going through all that for was to show y'all that what? The, the king, the king David, who was considered a just man, he erred like hell. He went into straight wickedness, but he repented. Right. And same thing as a bet. Um, you go to uh, go to what's the name real quick. Let's get Ahab. Go to First King twenty one, and we just gonna get the, the verse. Give me verse twenty nine. First King, twenty one. Twenty one and twenty nine. Oh, twenty nine. Okay. First King chapter twenty one and verse twenty nine. First King chapter twenty one and verse twenty nine. Seest thou hast Ahab humbled himself before me. Because he humbled himself before me, I would not bring the evil in his day. But in his son's days, will I bring the evil upon his house. Right, so what I'm showing you is... It don't go unpunished. It don't go unpunished, but you can repent. You can repent. And because he turned... This is what he's telling you. Because you repented in your time, I'm going to let you... I'm, I ain't going to get you right now. I'm going to get you in the third or fourth generation. Sheesh. You seem sincere. You seem like you truly repented. I'm, I'm, I'm going to wash away what you did. But that sin still got to be paid for. All right? So what I'm showing you is, in, your, in this walk, we going to error. But it's best to repent before punishment comes. And you may buy yourself a little time to blot out your sins. All right? Um, we all got our demons that we struggle with. We all have our things that we stumble. Just men stumble seven times. All right, um, watch this. Let's go to, uh, now let's go back, let's go back, let's go back, let's go back. As a fact, let's go back to the main scripture of the class. Remember I said it, Proverbs 24, 16? Because you got a flip side to this. Proverbs 24 and 16. Proverbs chapter 24 and verse 16. Proverbs chapter 24 and verse 16. For a just man falleth seven times, and riseth up again. So a just man falleth seven times, but riseth up again. He riseth up again. What will you do when you fall? It's all about how you pick yourself. Forgive us for that real quick. Uh, technical difficulties. <laughs> uh, lights with the blanket. I know y'all saw it. Don't get scared. I hope y'all ain't scared of the dark. <laughs> 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 all right. So, uh. Uh, read that again, it threw me off. All right. Oh, somehow. For a just man falleth seven times and riseth up again. So a just man on this walk, we all have our thorn that we battle with. We're going to slip, we're going to stumble, we're going to fall. But you must rise back up again and get back to walking righteously, right? Come on. All right. But the wicked shall fall into mischief. But the wicked shall fall into mischief. So this is the flip side. This is the person who don't pick themselves up by their sin. They do what? They start to uh, wallow in it. Give me 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 22 real quick. 2 Peter chapter 2 and verse 22. 2 Peter chapter 2 and verse 22. 
but it is, but it has happened unto them according to the true proverb. The dog is turned to his own vomit again. So that's what it means about uh, falling into mischief. He lays in it, right? He returns like the, like the true proverb and proverb because that's what was said first. The dog has returned to his own vomit. That's that person that you're not slipping. And remember I said you're not slipping or stumbling if you continue to keep doing the same thing over and over. You're not slipping or stumbling. You love sin. That's why you keep returning to that same vomit. The most I said, when you leave a sin and you go back into it, and then you leave it and you go back into it, it's just as disgusting as watching a dog throw up, walk across the yard and go back to it and eat it up. Y'all ain't never seen a dog throw up and eat his own throw up? You damn right. That's the same thing it is with your sin. If you committing the same sin over and over and over, it's like watching a dog eat his throw up in the sight of the most high. It's just filthy. It's nasty. It's an abomination. Right? Read on. And the soul that was washed her wallowing in the mire. Wallowing in mire. You know that's mire means S-H-I-T. Sugar honey I T. It's saying it's like you wallowing around and you're Alright? So watch this. Uh, now, one thing that we would know about a, a person that uh, that goes into the, how the wicked shall fall into mischief, a blatant sign of that is what? When you try to tell them about it, they get mad. Or, a better one, give me a uh, Cyrus 32 and 17 real quick, because uh, we know that the person that falls into mischief will not be reproved. A person that a simple person would not be reproved. What is the most common thing that a simple person do when you tell them about their flaws? What's this? Sirach so chapter 32 and verse 17. A simple man will not be reproved. I mean he will not be corrected. But will find an excuse according to his will. He will find an excuse. A wicked man will not be reproved. He'll just find an excuse. That's what people who fall into mischief do. That's what the wicked do. Watch this. Um, give me uh, Syrac 21 and 15. This is another thing that the wicked shall do. Syrac chapter 21 and verse 15. So a just man falleth seven times and riseth up again, but the wicked shall fall into mischief. So we already established that a wicked person ain't going to change from their ways. They're going to lay or they're going to continue to commit the same sins over and over. Uh, we also established that what? They will have an excuse for why they commit the sins. Uh, 21 and 15 is going to show that. They don't, this is, watch this. Read it real quick. Sirach chapter 21 and verse 15. If a skillful man hear a wise word, he will commend it and add unto it. But as soon as one of no understanding heareth it, it displeased him, and he canceled it behind his back. You ever ask somebody, you try to tell them something good for themselves, and because they don't like it, they cast it behind their back? Right. That's what he's saying. That's what a lot of them going to do with the words of the Most High God. The words are going to come out, you're going to correct them, they're going to throw it behind their back. Why? Because it ain't what they want to hear, or it displeases, it displeases them. Nobody, A lot of people don't want to hear about their own phone or their wrongdoings. And the moment you try to tell them to, tell them about it, you become the enemy. You try to tell somebody about the wrong that they're doing, and then you become the enemy. That's because as soon as he heard something that displeased him, he cast it behind his back. They didn't want to hear it. The hell with what you say. Or the hell with what the Bible say for that, for that sake. Watch this. But because of that, Proverbs 20, uh, 20 point 16 again. And then give me Proverbs 11 and 5. Proverbs chapter 24 and verse 16. For a just man falleth seven times and rises up again, but the wicked shall fall into mischief. But the wicked shall fall into mischief, right? Proverbs 11 and 5. Proverbs chapter 11 and verse 5. The righteousness of the perfect shall direct his way. So the righteousness of the perfect shall direct his way. Come on. But the wicked shall fall by his own wickedness. But the wicked shall fall by his own wickedness. That's why he fall into mischief. He fall into his own wickedness. But I tell you, like the Bible says, except you repent, you shall all die. Psalms 38, I mean Psalms 37 and verse 38. We almost finished now. Psalms chapter 37 and verse 38. Psalms chapter 37 and verse 38. So this is what's going to happen to those who refuse to repent. 
refuse to find a way to defeat the thorns that we battle in this walk. Remember, I told you, we all got our thorns that we battle. We all going to slip, we going to fall, we going to stumble. But your job is to overcome them things before your time is out. And if you shall not, Psalms 37 and verse 38. Psalm chapter 37 and verse 38. But the transgressors shall be destroyed together. The end of the wicked shall be cut off. So this tell you all, don't think because you got a multitude of people following you that your sins is, ain't going to be ain't gonna be He said, I'm going to kill all y'all together. All of y'all get it. You heard that saying before, you ride with him, you die with him? Right. Okay. You know what I'm saying? All y'all can get it. <laughs> all y'all can get it. Together. <laughs> right. All right, watch this. Psalms 145 and verse 20. Last scripture. Psalm chapter 145 and verse 20. I'm going to give you one more scripture after this. <laughs> Psalm chapter 145 and verse 20. The Lord preserveth all them that love him, but all the wicked. So, uh, so when it says the Lord preserveth all them that, that what? That love him. That keep his commandments. So when it says preserve, it means save. He saved all them that love him, that keep his commandments. Come on. But all the wicked will he destroy. But all the wicked, he going to do what? Destroy. Anybody can get it. <laughs> Who else wants some of these people? <laughs> beat him down, beat you down. Who else wants some? That's what the most I said. <laughs> destroy him and destroy you. Who else wants some of these people? <laughs> All right. <laughs> Watch this. So, moral story. Watch this. Go to uh, go to uh, 50, Isaiah 50. Is that 52? Isaiah 52, 1 and 2. About awake, awake. Isaiah 52. 52 verse 1 and 2. Isaiah chapter 52 and verse 1. All right, last scripture, y'all. <laughs> awake, awake. Y'all hear the way he said that? Awake, awake. Like, if you put it through, awake, awake. That's like somebody getting ready to walk into a car. Hey! Most times said, he was using the prophet to say, awake, awake. That's an urgency. When you see something put, somebody said the same word twice, that's urgency. Awake, awake. Come on. Put on thy strength, O Zion. Put on your strength. What is your strength? The law, statutes, and commandments. Come on. Put on thy beautiful garment. Put on your beautiful garment. That's a twofold. That's the garments that we wear on our holidays, and that's the laws that you're supposed to be dressed down in with the Most High God. Put on your beautiful garments. Render your heart and not just your garments. Put on your beautiful garments. Come on. O Jerusalem, the holy city. Come on. For his force there shall no more come unto thee the uncircumcised and the unclean. Same, same, same thing, uncircumcised and heart and mind and the unclean. Come on. Shake thyself from the dust. Shake yourself from the dust. That means shake off all your sins. Shake off the sins. Shake off the wind. Come on. Arise and sit down, O Jerusalem. Sit down in the laws, statutes, and commandments. Loose thyself from the bands of thy neck. Loose yourself from every wicked thing that pulls you, pulls you down. Those bands can go into your yokes of iron, your, your sin. Those sins that cling tight to you, break those bands. Come on. O captive daughter, daughter of Zion. That's it? That's it. All right. So with that, I hope today's class was edifying. Um, a just man fallen. A just man fallen. Or stumbled. I forgot what I named it. Alright, so let's get Matthew 26. Matthew. So, um, for the sister, last week I remember somebody, uh, sister posted something like, I'm um, Latin, what about Latin or something like that. It's Latin is just, you have to find out which, which descendant you come from out of the Latin, because Latin also is another way for saying Latino. Which means white. You know what I'm saying? But we know that Latinos, Latinos, all Latinos are not white. Right. That's just uh, the what, name yeah, the, yeah, right, right. The names that the captives put on you. Right, that's the name that the Latin the uh, the, the slaves owners put on us. Like conquistadors. Right, right, right. All right. So um, remember, we scattered amongst the four corners of the earth. We are gonna be called by proverbs and bywords. Right. Um. We we know that everybody that say we what our people call themselves African American, but they not African American. They Judites. Right. All glory to the Father. So yeah, you can a Latin person can still be an Israelite. You just have to figure out what particular heritage or line you come from. And, and I can tell you, you can only trace your bloodline so far back. So what you gotta do is see if your spirit bears witness with the scriptures. Right. All right. Um, one thing we know about all the day Israelites, we went on slave trade. We did. All right. So if you wasn't, a, 
you, if you wasn't a slave, damn it, you was the slave owner. If you was a slave <laughs> owner, <laughs> that means you are not an Israelite. Game <laughs> over. All right. Uh, thank, thank you. Uh, glory to the Father. Oh, uh, glory to the Father. So, let's get Matthew 26 before I forget. Matthew chapter 26 and verse 6. Now, when Jesus was in Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, there came to him a woman having an alabaster box of very precious ointment and poured it on his head as he sat at meat. But when his disciples saw it, they had indignation, saying, To what purpose is this waste? For his ointment might have been sold for much and given to the poor. When Jesus understood it, he said unto them, Why trouble ye the woman? For she hath brought the good work upon me. For you have the poor always with you, but you have not always. For in this she hath poured this ointment on my body, she did it for my burial. Verily I say unto you, Wheresoever this gospel shall be preached in the whole world, there also this that this woman hath done be told for a memorial of her. All right. Um... Any questions? Any questions? We'll, we'll give our brothers and sisters that's online, if there's any questions, anything you want to answer to, if we can help you, we'll help you out. We'll give you about a minute or two to see a question through. Shalom. Brother says Schwan. <laughs> Shalom. You already know the Shabbat. Shalom and happy Sabbath. Oh yeah, um, tonight we're going to be keeping the new moon. Tonight we're going into the new moon. So, uh, if anybody does not know what the new moon means, Shalom, shalom. That's right. Be perfect. Be ye perfect as the Father is in heaven. Right. All right. Um, we, we, we kick in a new moon tonight. If, if anybody that, you know, doesn't know what the new moon is about, if you would like for us to film that class, just, I guess, type Y real quick. Um, you would like for us to film the new moon class so you can understand what the new moon is about, type Y. If not, we're going to do it how we've been doing it. You know, celebrate it. And we probably ain't going to film it. And the new moon is a high holy day that is required to be kept. So if you don't know how to keep the new moon, I suggest you type Y because you will be put to death with the power. Right. You will be the, you will be put to death if you defile the new moon. If you do not know how to keep it, just type Y and we will fill that class. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Happy new moon to those who already started this. We'll be starting out that Sunday. Somebody got some good food on us, huh? Somebody got some food. I ain't seen no what. Sunday, John. Oh. Wow. That's it.